What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today we are taking a look at my latest song. This is Flying Saucers, a very obviously Stephen Walking influenced uh, electro track. So I'm going to start off with the drop. I'm going to build it up piece by piece and then we're going to go into the individual elements. So here we go. And then as you get further on to the drop, we add these two elements as well. Let's show you guys what's going on here. So first of all, let's start with the drums. Got two main elements here. Got a kick. This kick is actually from a uh, previous song that I've done. I forget which one specifically, it's uh, from Uncanny Valley. Okay, and it's tuned to be within the key of the song. Kind of a nice short punchy kick. And uh, don't, don't have too, too much uh, low end so that the kick and the bass don't fight because the bass is definitely the main focus. This is meant to be a short punchy kick because with whereas in house, it would be a much more bass heavy kick. In this, it's meant to, it's almost like dubstep, whereas the, the kick is a little less low end heavy and a little more short and punchy. So then we got the snare. And this snare is actually, I made this in a different session file because um, I was just playing around with some electro stuff and layering snares and eventually ended up with the snare sound. I think this is about uh, three snares, I believe. And once again, made it to be very short and very punchy. And here's what it was before uh, processing in here. I don't like that tail. I tend to favor very uh, punchy elements in general. And so one of my favorite things to do is to cut off long tails using LFO tool. So here's with off. Just tightens it up very nicely. And then some EQ. Bring out the body. And then finally, put in a nice uh, reverb space. So I got an open hi-hat. Just doing four on the floor. And, um, little side-chained uh, hi-hat, close hi-hat, so, white nose whoosh, no side-chaining out this time around, more acting as an impact, as is this impact, so, then finally these two elements, uh, these hats right here, this hi-hat track right here is actually from a different track of mine. I forget which one at the moment, but uh, sometimes I'll just bounce elements out and then reuse them. So if I, if I need a quick little shaker element like this, I just go pull this in. Makes my life a lot easier and uh, makes me more efficient in laying ideas down. So got this. How kind of all the hi-hats kind of interact with each other. That is the drums. And then, of course, the main attraction, the bass. They take off LFO tool here. So this started off as a massive preset that I went ahead and modified pretty heavily. This is actually also the bass used in uh, Wake Up, my track from the beginning of the year. And um, a fair amount of processing on it and modification within Massive itself. So here we go. So each of those things serves a pretty uh, specific purpose. So let me go through each thing one by one. So we got the original patch, distortion, give it a bit more bite, bass amp, let me play it without and then with, you can you can listen for the amount of low end, it almost adds like a sub and it kind of warms it up a bit, so. I use that on basses quite a bit 
And then it was a bit too wide, so I pulled on a direction mixer and just narrowed it down just a bit. So it's more focused and up the middle. So thank you. So the low end was a bit too much, especially on more bass heavy systems. And finally, just a little bit of reverb. And then LFO, LFO tool, of course. And then the reason it's able to do that growl effect is uh, some pretty extreme automation. And that is a parameter within Massive that controls, among other things, cutoff and a wavetable position. So I kind of had an idea of the ways in which I wanted it to growl and kind of flow. And so then it was up to me to just do a bunch of playing around with, with parameters to tweak it until I got something that I had in my head. And that just took a bunch of experimentation to get the way I wanted it. So, and finally, the synthy elements. So that's these two right here, which I'll come back to these in a bit. But uh, for this drop there, a little saw element and um, a different saw element. And at the beginning of the drop, I also have in there a piano. So let's go to that. Let's uh, go to the breakdown. start off with the chords elements. The main feature is a Nexus preset with a massive crap ton of high-end boosted. Like this. It's a very, very bright element. Two super saws. Uh, we got this one. It's kind of a very clean super saw. It doesn't have too much of a sustain, it keeps it punchy. And then this one providing more of a sustain and more mid-range. So they work together. So the piano providing that uh, transient. And then finally the same bass that I ended up using later in the drop. And I've got some some automation over there so uh, to transition it into the uh, build. Cut out all a uh, bunch of the low end. We got the lead. This is a pretty quirky little lead and one feature of it. A pretty heavy Stephen Walking influence, especially in that lead, but in the whole style of the track, really. But, um... One of the things about it is that the longer you hold down a note on the lead, I have a MIDI keyboard here. The longer you hold down a note, the more and more it kind of does that wobble, the more it does that vibrato. So some of the shorter notes, you don't really hear it, but in a longer note like this one, that vibrato slowly comes in. So you get that, that kind of weird little alien feel. Like an old cheesy sci-fi movie or something. And um, beyond that, a couple of little elements. This little pad thing. Just playing the bass notes. Just filling out, filling it out a bit so it doesn't feel too empty. Alrighty, that is it for today. Don't forget to subscribe for more Audio Geek videos and electronic music. I will have probably have a new track coming out next week. That is the plan anyway. So until then, I'm Gabe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.